Hello guys and welcome back to Replay the Video Game Aficionado. In our last episode I introduced you to this channel and the Remember Me franchise. Today we will take a look at our first installment in a series with Memorize the Beginning. This is a blog on the blogging platform Tumblr. It was created as an introduction to the things in the game and serves as a precursor for Antoine's journal, which we will discover within the next episodes. Memorize the Beginning follows Antoine Cartier Wells, the founder of Memorize, the grandfather of Nilin. Let's see how the events that happened influenced him and his idea of sharing memory comes to life. First, only in his head, when he was writing down his thoughts in this blog. But as time goes on, you can watch him as he make his technical progress until the very first prototype of Sensen, the human-machine interface which can access human memory. While our adventure starts in 1984 with the birth of Antoine, the blog is beginning in 2013, when Antoine moved from France to San Francisco. As an introduction, I was cutting out a video from Antoine's journal, which we will cover in the next episode. So we can have a small view on his childhood for better continuity. But first of all, thank you to all subscribers and their feedback. I know the audio was a pain in the ass last time, and I promise it will getting better from now on. I would like to share some of the feedback with you. Simon wrote, Hey Alex, your channel sucks. It's boring and it didn't grab me. Hey Simon, thank you for your honest opinion. I present things which are made by others. And I have to confess, sometimes they're a bit lengthy. But I will try to improve the given material in a fun way. Nonetheless, I tried to bring some additional fun to it. In the last episode I hided some easter eggs and references. But it seemed that they weren't found because no one looked at it. Considering my audience, I'm going to make this really quick. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I have the only fun on board. Welcome to Spoil Air. At the end of this episode I will spoil all easter eggs from the last episode. So stay tuned. Let's start with a small glimpse on Antoine's childhood. It's 256 processes when capable of analyzing over 200 million Dolly per the first adult mammal ever to be successfully cloned. It sparked debates the world over about the top website for 1998. The tiny startup Google has moved In 2013, Antoine has moved to San Francisco. This is where this block is starting. The thoughts of Antoine in this block are subjectively but the described events are real and where truly happen. It's very interesting how Antoine is interpreting this. Please feel yourself invited to do it on your own. While the block starts with the last entry, I scrolled it down to the beginning at the bottom. We will start from there. This is the story of Antoine, the founder of Memorize and creator of the sensational engine, Sensen. As you can see here, the term Sensen is an abbreviation for Sensational Engine, the name of the software. Memory is a diary we all carry about with us. By Oscar Wilde. With all the new possibilities of my research, I start to wonder how much longer we'll be able to keep that diary completely private. I can't quite decide on what this logo should look like. So many ideas, yet none of them quite right. I lose so many of these notebooks, I decided the best way to preserve it was make it digital. In memory, everything seems to happen to music. By Tennessee Williams. Not the power to remember, but its very opposite, the power to forget, is a necessary condition for our existence. Cesare Pavese. This quote has inspired me for such a long time. This 
This was one of my earliest iterations of the Sensation Engine, Sensen. It features a simple AR overlay that allows you to place pins at important locations around your city. This was where it all started. Posted on March the 20th in 2013. My first trip out of Paris had led me to a scholarship in San Francisco, where I can work and develop my vision for the Sensation Engine. San Francisco is a revelation. The people, the city. I can hardly recognize myself amongst the organized chaos. And of course, as always, there's a girl. My eidetic memory has never allowed or encouraged me to form strong relationships. But this one girl, there's something about her I can't quite put my finger on. My first and only encounter with her came when she went out of her way to point me in the right direction. She must have recognized how clearly lost I was. As she walked away, leaving me bewildered and embarrassed, I managed to awkwardly blurt out the simples of questions. With a very smile and without breaking stride, she shouted back, Molly. No matter how long we exist, we have our memories. Points in time which time itself cannot erase. But what if there was a way to change that? This was one of my first thoughts when creating Memorize and the Sensing Technology. The following text is a short summary of the article which is linked above. Who wants to read the full article can access it on the Tumblr blog or download it as a PDF file. Simply click on the link. The forgetting pills erases painful memories forever. This new model of memory isn't just a theory. Neuroscientists actually have a molecular explanation of how and why memories change. In fact, their definition of memory has broadened to encompass not only the cliché cinematic scenes from childhood, but also the persisting mental loops of illnesses like post-traumatic stress disorder and addiction, and even pain disorders like neuropathy. Unlike most brain research, the field of memory has actually developed simpler explanations. Whenever the brain wants to retain something, it relies on just a handful of chemicals. Even more startling, an equally small family of compounds could turn out to be a universal eraser of history. A pill that we could take whenever we wanted to forget anything. And researchers have found one of these compounds. In the near future, the act of remembering will become a choice. I have the name, I have the concept, and I know the heights of where I want all of this to lead. I find myself perplexed by seemingly the simplest task. Allowing myself to choose one of my sketched logos is proving the most taxing core of all. My real work slots in with every free waking moment, nestled somewhere between Molly and studying, although Molly is becoming more and more of an integral aspect of my research. Her presence and creative mind often venture places mine will not allow. University, though unchallenging, it is an experience. People's attitudes and motivations are fascinating, and I dream of the time when my sense will be ready to recognize these simple yearnings and translate them into something tangible. Something that will eventually make languages obsolete and bind people beyond the borders of language. A memory is what is left when something happens and does not completely unhappen. By Edward de Bono, one of the most creative thinkers our generation has known. He coined the term lateral thinking and is a strong leader and supporter of teaching thinking as a subject in schools. An incredible mind and such an inspiration to me throughout my work. These early sketches were where the sentence started. I want to make sure each is recorded and chronicled 
so eventually people will be able to see the journey as a whole. It looks so simple on paper, but the reality is a very different story. Hopefully soon I'll have physical photos to share with all of you. Brain scanning headphones match songs to your mood. The headphones feature a protruding electroencephalograph EEG sensor that scans brain patterns to match a person's mood with an appropriate song. This is a great point of inspiration for what I'm trying to achieve, although it is slightly simpler and infinitely more commercial. The principle of being able to read your mood and then communicate this somehow is fascinating soon. Our memories are the only paradise from which we can never be expelled. John Paul Richter or Johann Paul Friedrich Richter as it was his original name. For some this is a comforting thought, one that can bring peace and safety. For me, however, this eidetic memory, my inability to forget anything, is often more of a burden than a blessing. John Paul Richter calls it a paradise. With these memories I am making now here in San Francisco, I am beginning to understand what this paradise might look like.